We'll do an extended example now. It's going to use property methods. It's going to use the idea of interfaces and message passing in order to implement complex numbers. So first let's review what a complex number is. Complex numbers are those which have both a real and an imaginary component. The imaginary component is whatever magnitude is multiplied by the square root of negative one, which doesn't exist, so it's imaginary. Now there's two representations for these numbers. The rectangular representation of a complex number gives you the real part and the imaginary part. So one plus one i. The polar representation is the same plane. So a point in the same position is the same number, but that number is described in a different way. That same number in the polar representation would be described as the distance between the origin and that point, which is the square root of two, because this is a equilateral right triangle where the hypotenuse is the square root of two. And the angle from the x-axis is the second component, which in this case is pi over four, because remember there are two pi radians in a circle. Okay, so these are two different ways of describing the same point. Most operations don't care about the representation. If you're gonna pass these things around, um, just store them, then we treat complex numbers as a whole, and it doesn't matter which representation we're using, but there are some mathematical operations that are much easier on one than the other. So that's why we might want to keep both representations around in the same system as opposed to just trying to commit to one throughout a program. So here's the idea. We'll have rectangular representation and polar representation of a complex number in our system. But a shared set of attribute messages will allow us to access either one. So every complex number will have a real component, an imaginary component, those together describe where it is in rectangular space, and a magnitude and an angle. Now, an actual complex number might only be represented by two out of these four things, but we can always compute the other two using um, functions. And those functions will be property methods so that we don't know which one we're computing and which one we're just looking up. We'll see the details of that in a minute. Okay, with this set of four messages, now we have an abstraction layer where complex numbers are two-dimensional vectors, which means they have all these properties at the same time. And we can use them as we want. And we implement, in terms of those two-dimensional vectors, two ways of combining complex numbers. We can add them together, and we can multiply them. And then, at the very highest level of abstraction, complex numbers are just whole data values. The only thing we can do with them is add them together, multiply them, and um, you know store them and pass them around. So this is the structure that we want to create in our code. 